Britain. That tribute to all of our mining heritage, the 11.2 meter high Man and John! Hey! You may have noticed I ain't actually from Yorkshire. We have come from a land beyond England, across the river tame of the land of Kurno! And twas, there's one end, right by lovely, I'm forget her way. And she's got the Cornish kilt and all, look at that. 2016 was the 10th anniversary of the Cornish Mining World Heritage Site. And they said, anyone got a big idea for to celebrate 4,000 years of mining heritage? A big idea they asked for? Well, we gave them a medium sort of one. And we stamped our boy the length of Cornwall in that summer. 150,000 people turned out to see him. That's about one in three of the population of Cornwall. And when we reached Giever Tin Mine in the Ultimate West, we knew we had to take him out to the world. We wanted to follow the footsteps of the Cousin Jacks, the Cornish miners who went out to South Australia and went out to Chile and they went all the way to Africa and some of them ended up in Yorkshire. They came right here, my darlings. Last night we met a lady whose great grandpa come from Liscard, just near us, as a miner in these parts. And we are some chuffed to be sharing our mining stories with your mining stories because it's just beneath the surface of our skin. We're that close, and here, literally, just nine foot down, is where the seam of coal runs beneath where you are sitting. And those stories are always not just about grit and grim, not just about tragedy, but also about triumph. In the library down to Trora Town in Cornwall, we found a rather amazing book. And this is the actual written account of a miner from 1846. Allow me to read you the first page. My first day in a copper mine in Cornwall by William Crago. Oh, there he is. At the very early age of nine years old, my father told me I was to start work as a miner. My dear mother was busily employed in getting together my canvas jacket and trousers, a flannel shirt and pants, boots without socks, and a hard hat. At half past four in the morning, we walked to the mine. My father took several pieces of steel, ranging from one to two and a half feet in length, and showed me how to carry these drills by slinging them across my shoulder. I had on my right arm about five pounds of black gunpowder in a copper can. On my left arm, a coil fuse. In my pockets, gads. And each of us had a fair-sized potato pasty for our crib. To the ladder way and went down about 20 feet to the first landing. Feather then produced matches and lit my candle. Some clay was wrapped around it and it was stuck to the front of my hard hat. Never look down. Hold tight. Your hands and your feet will find their own way. 
we continued our endless journey down into the blackness. My back was stiff and sore, and my hands were numb with the continual clutching of the ladder rungs. After two hours climbing, we finally reached the landing stage. I was 1,600 feet underground. I was just nine years old. Here in Yorkshire, young children were also regularly employed in the mines, either as trappers, they sat alone in the complete pitch blackness for hours on end, opening and closing the air doors when wagons came through, or they worked as hurriers. Their job was to pull a hundred weight tub of coal using the felt and chain. This barbarous and unnatural method of haulage caused great distress and often raised wheels and wounds even drawing blood from the skin. Sing from the chamber to the grave. I hear the dying miner say a sound of melody I crave upon my back. Fourth of July, 1838. That's 180 years in just two weeks time at the Husker Colliery. The day was hot and sunny. And then a violent thunderstorm ranged from 2 p.m. About two and a half inches of rain fell. It put out the boiler fire and the engine could not be used. Some of the children, girls and boys, who worked in the mine tried to get out of the pit by way of the ventilation drift to Nab's wood. As they made their way up the drift, a stream which was swollen into a rushing torrent by the downpour overflowed down that drift. The children were washed off their feet and swept back down against the air drawer. The water rose against the door slowly. 26 children drowned. Sing sweetly as you <laughs> Francis Hoyland, 13. Catherine Garnett, 8. And keep the William Alec, 12. Sarah Newton, 8. Samuel Horn, 10. Sarah Jukes, 8. Eli Hitchinson, 9. Mary Sellers, 10. John Simpson, 9. Ellen Parker, 15. George Barnett, 9. Hannah Taylor, 17. George Lamb, 8. Elizabeth Holland, 15. William Wormsley, 8. Anne Moss, 9. John Goddard, 8. James Turton, 10. Hannah Webster, 13. Elizabeth Carr, 13. George Birkinshaw, 10. And James Birkinshaw, 7 brothers. Isaac Wright, 12. And Amos Wright, 8 brothers. James Clarkson, 16. And Elizabeth Clarkson, 11. Brother and sister. Remember 
the effort and the endeavor. We remember the industry and the innovation. We remember the triumph and the tragedy. We remember those who did not come home. Sing from the We got further to go. Just a little more effort. Just a little more endeavor. Just a little more industry. Colbert, Arons, Sten, Sten, Sten. Hitting pub Carrick, hitting pub men. Colbert, Arons, Sten, Sten, Sten. And Guella Sten in Kerno. Colbert, Arons, Sten, Sten, Sten. Hitting pub Carrick, hitting pub men. Cobber, Arons, Sten, 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 and Gwellistan in Curno. Here we go, my lovelies. Cobber, Arons, Sten, 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 in Pub Carrick, in Pubman. Cobber, Arons, 
Stand, stand, stand! Hang on, stand! William Crago's journal, I had been working nearly five years in the mine when an invention was brought into use. It was called the Man Engine. By this invention, we could ride up and down the shaft to our work without scarce any ladder climbing. The Man Engine was one of the greatest blessings ever introduced for the benefit of the poor miner. On this particular morning, we had rolled down about 80 fathoms that turned into the underwise section, when in some unaccountable manner, the rod seemed to slip away from under us, and I was thrown, head foremost, down the shaft, striking my head as I fell, and almost losing my ear, and very severely injuring my left side. I fell across a piece of wood, which crosses the shaft, and there I hung on until I was rescued by my father, and thank God, escaping with my life. Stand, stand, stand. 
I'm glad I stand in Colonel. The black gold of Yorkshire, coal! With this earth treasure, we wish to invoke a prosperous future for one and all. Cobra Arons, stand, stand, stand. In Pope Carrack and Pope Men. Cobra Arons, stand, stand, stand. And what about you, Wentworth and Says Yorkshire? What do you wish for the future? What will you add to our crucible that we may smelt a bright and gleam in time yet to come? Please join us with your wishes for this place, for these islands, for this planet. Cormor Arons, stand, stand, stand. In Pope Carrack, in Pope Man. Cormor Arons, stand, stand, stand. And well I stand in Kuro.
engineers, inventors, innovators, step up, help us achieve our alchemy of smelting, help us in the magical transubstantiation of the gleaming metal from the ore, help us, bring us, give us our modern world. and our tapered barrel whim, our mechanized copper ore crusher and steam stamps, our hydraulic ore dressing jig and barrel pulverizer, the portable engine, the traction engine, the world's first steam locomotive, the steamship, the car, the lorry, the aeroplane. Give us the computer, the microchip and the mobile phone. Give us our modern world. Castorian Trophy, we would like to present to you Wentworth Woodhouse. We Our big boy has been on some track all the way from Giver Tin Mine in the far west, joining mining communities across the whole of Britain. And this trophy was cast specially for you by Terrell's Foundry, the last working foundry in Hale, where we'd have come from. And we would like you to keep hold of it, if you can find a mantle priest tough enough to keep it up, because it weighs a pound or two. And you can have it as a perpetual reminder of the day that Wentworth Woodhouse resurrected the Manager! <laughs>